So pandemic update, uh, got this thing out of here. It, let's go through this thing. So again, this is a 2.9 liter. This is originally a 2.7, but it has the uh, oil fed tensioners and someone took the exhaust off of it and put on a SC exhaust. So it's got a couple things done. I don't know, we'll get into it, but let's just start at the back here. So I don't see any moisture on the shift shaft, but pretty much every seam on this transmission looks terrible. And I don't know if that's leaking or if it's just some sort of sealant. I'm, I'm just gonna assume leaking. Um, it looks like the bottom half under this axle seal is probably done because it's all moist back here. There's also a huge oil leak. I don't even know what that's from, but it's all down the back of the engine. I'm guessing it might be this pressure switch or something. I'm not sure what that is. I'll, I'll get into it later. But I think that thing is for sure leaking. Um, valve covers, pretty gross. Uh, it looks like this might be a leak from up there still. But down here, definitely either the bottom of this valve cover or this whole valve cover they're, those gaskets are probably bad. This is a turbo valve cover, so it has these, this ribbing. So again, somebody's done some stuff to this engine. This exhaust is garbage. It's beat, it leaks. I mean, it's it's absolutely disgusting. It's patched, it's going to the junk. Um, this, I'm assuming, is an oil feed line. That looks pretty wet. Kind of questioning this whole hose right here. There's a puddle of oil behind the distributor that I, I can't really get on video very well. Fan, okay, so this is a five blade. A lot of 911s have like an 11 blade fan and they say that that improves cooling. I don't know. Okay, so this is my thoughts on this. Mid-years, all the engines destroy themselves because it was a magnesium case, bigger displacement, more heat. Then they added that stupid exhaust that had even more heat. So these engines overheated like crazy. And I'm not totally convinced this fan is a big deal. I kind of feel like most of it was the exhaust. Um, I haven't had any overheating problems with this car, but it's got a newer exhaust on it. I'm not sure I'm gonna upgrade that fan or not yet. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, another oil puddle under here. Maybe that's a pressure sensor. I don't know. I don't know what any of this stuff is yet. There's just another sensor here. Um, this oil line, again, looks pretty moist. Yeah, pretty much all the oil lines look like shit on this. This valve cover is for sure leaking. We've got pretty good oil leak on the top here. Again, beneath the valve cover and then the bottom valve cover is just caked and disgusting. So, yeah, this thing's pretty leaky. Um, none of that's really too big of a deal. The, the big issue is gonna be what comes next. Um, I'm gonna split the transmission off the engine and then tomorrow I'm borrowing a hoist. I'm gonna try to put it up on this engine stand here. Um, but once we get it up on the stand, I'll be able to uh, check the head studs. Uh, that'll be a big deal. If the head studs are good, that's really, really good. And then um, do a leak down test. If both of those are good, uh, this will be a fairly affordable project, other than the transmission. The, uh, top of the engine taken apart. This is the uh, engine stand adapter and you're supposed to mount it to this side of the engine because over here you have an oil cooler right here. The, the cylinders are actually staggered. You can see it right here. So there's an oil cooler right here. This green thing right here is just an air shroud or an air duct. 
So this fan shoves all the air down in between the cylinders and there's an oil cooler right here. We'll be flipping this thing over and removing the lower valve covers um, so we can check the head studs and we'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed, all right? All right, so those are the head studs down in there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just torque them a little bit, uh, just see if they hold. Um, I'm gonna actually tighten, and if it if it if it's totally loose, that's that's really bad. Um, I'm a little nervous because most of them look pretty good, except for that one right there. That one looks really wet. I don't know why there would be a bunch of oil in there. So, it has me nervous. If anyone is gonna be loose, I have a feeling it might be that one. If that's loose, that's gonna be bad news. So. That one's good. That one turned a little bit. I'm like barely putting any pressure on this thing. And it's holy, it's maybe that one's loose. Oh, that one's holding. Oh, wow, really loose again, really loose. This is the one that looks really sketchy. Um, I'm really hoping I can't turn this one much. Oh yeah, wow, it doesn't feel like it's connected to anything. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is tighten it and see if it tightens up, but Either the stud's broken or pulled out of the case. Not this one. Okay. Well, got one bad head stud. That. That blows. Let's just see if I can pull it out with a magnet. Don't come out with a magnet, but it sure seems really, really loose. And it isn't tightening at all, so. You can see that movement, that's... Wait. Oh shit! It tightened up! No way! Okay, so... That's crazy. So that head stud is tightening up. Um, it was really, really, really loose. That's, that's wild. So I guess... What I could try to do is torque down all these head studs to spec and okay so it's not broken if it it could still pull out of the case if this doesn't have case savers but uh, I don't know we'll see I'm gonna do the other side now So, we're just gonna try to tighten this one and see if she tightens up. Oh, yep. Yep, okay, that one tightened up nicely. We're gonna try this one. That one was pretty loose, but it tightened up. Really good news. Alright, so um, what I found out is that I'm supposed to retorque all the head studs, these are just the lower ones, to 20 foot pounds. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the top valve cover and I'm gonna see if all of these hold 20 foot pounds. If so, that is super awesome. So it was scary to find loose ones, but so far they've all tightened back up. Um, you know, this is a budget build. Ideally you'd take this all the way apart, but just to make sure everything was square, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, so I'm gonna take this top valve cover off and then we're gonna torque all the head studs. Okay, so I just finished torquing all these. The problem was, is this torque wrench was not clicking at all. So um, I went outside and tested it on a lug nut of one of my other cars, and this thing could roll a car forward and was not clicking. So it's really cool that this uh, torque wrench decided to die right when I'm doing something like vitally important. Um, actually not cool. But the good news is that I didn't see that we have case savers installed in this magnesium case. I'll get a zoom into those in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen all the uh, head studs and I'm going to retorque with this new torque wrench that I just purchased. So this should still be good, I'm assuming, but they're all made in Taiwan now, so we know. So this is weird, um, the lower head studs are all good, but I see a completely loose nut in that one. That could mean a broken head stud, it could mean it just backed all the way off. That's pretty weird though. Oh, look at that, it's not a broken nut it's a piece of RTV so if I ever rebuilt this motor smash a shit ton of RTV on the sides of all these rockers Oop, loose loose there we go again really loose All the head studs, torque to spec, none of them are broken. Fucking awesome, so so happy about this. I mean, this is like a two to three thousand dollar win right here. And not only the money, but time. Next steps, um, I'm gonna do a leak down test and that'll tell me if I need to get any valve work done. 